Okay, so in this last topic, we're now going to come to this question of, suppose you know a series converges. What does it converge to? Well, I may not be able to find that exactly, but maybe if I just add up finitely many terms of the series, then I can get a good estimate of what it approaches. Well, the question is then, how many terms do you need to add up? Do I add up 100 terms? Do I add up 1,000 terms? Do I add up a million terms? How many terms do I need to add up so that I get within a certain tolerance that I want of the actual value of the sum of which I don't know? So suppose I want to know the sum to the first five decimal places. How many terms do I need to take? Well, that all depends on the series in question, the particular example you're looking at, and how fast the terms go to zero. It all depends on how fast the terms go to zero. So can we figure out how big n should be, how many terms we should take? And that's what we're going to work on now. So a little bit of terminology. If s is the value to which the series converges, this is the thing we don't know, and we use the nth partial sum, so the sum of the first n terms, which we can do for, for in, in theory, we can do it for any value of n. Now I take the difference, and that's how far I am from the actual value of the sum. That's what we're calling the remainder, and it's just the sum of the tail end of the series. I add up from a sub 1 to a sub n. The stuff I ignored was a sub n plus 1 onwards. That's the remainder of the series. That's how far away I am from the actual value. You can think of this as the error as well. Now the question is how big could this tail end be? Well what we're going to do is we're going to interpret it geometrically. We're going to interpret these, this tail end as an area. So I've got two diagrams drawn here. Uh, the only difference between these diagrams is if I'm looking on an interval, well a couple of intervals here, n to n plus 1 and n plus 1 to n plus 2, I've got some choices on those intervals. Do I take the left-hand endpoint or the right-hand endpoint to cap it off? So for this point right here, which has a height of a sub n plus 1, I can use that point as either the right-hand endpoint for the first interval from n to n plus 1 and cap it off, so then a sub n plus 1 is the area of the rect at that rectangle, or I can use it as the left-hand endpoint for a rectangle on the next interval, and that's what this diagram is over here. Now the only difference between these two diagrams is that in one case the rectangle gives an area that's bigger than the area under the curve, and in the other case it's smaller than the area under the curve. That's the only difference here, and we're, used, we're exploiting the fact that the function is positive and decreasing and continuous, the hypotheses in the integral test and the hypotheses here. Okay, so what can we conclude from these diagrams? Well, I can conclude that the sum of the areas of these rectangles, the tail end of the series, has to be smaller than the area under the curve from n to infinity. So this first inequality is immediately concluded from this diagram. The area under the curve is bigger than the area of the rectangles. The other inequality comes from this diagram, which says that the area under the curve is smaller than the area of the rectangles, because I've chosen my rectangle to be over the region, overlapping the region under the curve. And so what this tells me is that I get bounds on my remainder term. How big is my tail end for any particular n value? How big is the tail end? How far away am, is my partial sum from the actual value? Well, I've got bounds now on how big that tail end is. It's smaller than this integral, and it's bigger than this integral. And we can work out the values of those integrals. So let's have a look at an example. We saw that this converges. So we already know that this series converges. The interesting part about this example is we saw that these terms sit between 1 over n and 1 over n squared. The 1 over n's, the series diverges. And the 1 over n squared, the series converges. So the point here is, is that this series has terms which sit slightly smaller than a 
terms from a divergent series and slightly bigger than one that converges. We found that these converge, but they are pretty close to one that diverges. So these things go to zero fast enough convergence, but they may not go to zero fast enough to um, allow us to take small values, small partial sums, like the first 100 term, 100 terms, and get some good estimate for the actual value of the sum. This convergence just might be so slow, the tail end might not go to zero fast enough to get sort of any usable information about the first 100 terms or 1,000 terms or a million terms. But that's what we're, we're interested in doing in this question, is just trying to figure out if I wanted to know, let's say, the first digit of the value to which it converges, so I want my remainder to be about 0 0.01, how big do I need to take n to be? Well, let's have a look. We know that the remainder term is between the integral from n to infinity of 1 over x ln of x squared dx and bigger than the integral from n plus 1 to infinity of 1 over x ln of x squared dx. Now I do the antiderivative in this case, that's negative 1 over ln of x, and that's going from n plus 1 to m, the limit as m goes to infinity, and that's smaller than rn, which is smaller than the limit as m goes to infinity of negative 1 over ln of x from n to infinity, uh, n to m. Now I pop these values, these upper limit and lower limits of integration in, the 1 over ln of m goes to, inf goes to 1 over ln of m goes to 0 as m goes to infinity, so this thing settles down to just 1 over ln of n plus 1. And that's rn, and that's 1 over ln of n. So using n terms in the series, adding them up, getting that as an estimate for the value to which the series converges to, how far away I am from it, my remainder, is between these two values. What I want is rn to be smaller than 0 0.01. So let's choose n so that if I want rn to be smaller than this, if I choose n so that 1 over ln of n is smaller than 0 0.01, so that this thing is smaller than 0 0.01, then I get that rn, which is smaller than that, has to also be smaller than 0 0.01. So let's choose n so that this is true. Well, that means then that ln of n has to be bigger than 1 over 0 0.01, which is 100. Or in other words, n has to be bigger than e to the 100. So if I want to make sure that my remainder is smaller than 0 0.01, I need to take n at least e to the 100, or another way to say this, n at least e to the 100 is going to guarantee that I, I get a remainder of smaller than 0 0.01. The problem here is that this is huge. This is approximately 2.69 times 10 to the 43. So I need to sum up about 2.69 times 10 to the 43 terms to get an estimate to within 0 0.01 of the actual value of the sum. So this is huge. We can't do this on a computer in our lifetime or even multiple lifetimes. Um, it's just too big to add up these, these many numbers to get the estimate to within that much. And this, again, reflects the fact that the series that we're looking at here, it converges, but it was so close to something that diverged that the convergence is just really slow. The series converges, but it's got really slow convergence. Um, by way of comparison, do the same thing for this series, the sum of 1 over n squared, n equals 1 to infinity. We know that this converges. Let's try to figure out how many terms I need to add up so that I get within 0 0.01 of the actual value of the sum. So we're going to do the same thing here. Rn is between the integral from n to infinity, 1 over x squared dx, and the integral from n plus 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. 
And so this is then negative 1 over x, n plus 1 to infinity, smaller than rn is smaller than negative 1 over x from n to infinity. So our remainder term is between 1 over n and 1 over n plus 1. Now we want rn to be less than 0 0.01. So if we take 1 over n to be smaller than 0 0.01, then that implies that n has to be bigger than 100. So if I want to find the value to which this series converges to, to within 0 0.01, or in other words, roughly like the first decimal place of the answer, then I just need to take uh, at least 101 terms. So I add up 101 terms, and then I'm guaranteed to be within 0 0.01. So this converges, and it converges rather quickly. Um, that's what this is telling us. It doesn't take very long to get a few decimal places of accuracy. Um, okay, so that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.